This is the CJRB Pyrite. CJRB is a company by Artisan. I love Artisan Cutlery and uh, I have a couple of CJRBs and I have just, well, I've loved them. And so CJRB reached out to me, asked if I wanted to see this. And uh, my answer was, of course, yes, please. <laughs> so they sent it to me. Thank you, CJRB, because I do not have to return this. Uh, this might end up in a giveaway uh, on Thursday Night Knives. I've been giving lots of knives away. And, um, well, it's fun to do. I like spreading the wealth. What can I say? And uh, as Nick Shabazz is, is uh, fond of saying, um, this could be the best QC'd um, pyrite out there, but I doubt it because I'm no Nick Shabazz, so I don't think uh, too much is riding on this review, but I definitely want to tell you my personal take on this knife, which uh, if you're going to turn off right now, I really like it. I really like this knife. Uh, and what I like about it most is it's very robust button lock because uh, there have been button lock issues out there in the wider world. You know, button locks have just totally taken off on knives, flippers, thumb stud versions, all of this, uh, lots of button locks out there. And some people are getting them to fail with the, with the spine whack test. Uh, that is not happening with this knife. And actually, I, I only have three other um, button lock knives left in my collection, and none of them have been cursed with that button lock failure. And uh, I will, I will say right here, right now, if you're doing that with your knife in regular usage, you need to find a different tool. I, I suggest a hammer, uh, but uh, we, we all know the, the spine of a knife is not for impact. Um, but at the same time, we also want to know that the lock we're using on our locking knife is going to work and hold up to robust use. Now, to me, the, the issue I've always had with a button lock is just having it closed during use because my thumb happens to be there. Hasn't happened to me, but I could see how someone who uses their knives all the time to do all sorts of different chores, how that could come up. Um, so oftentimes it's the design of the button that makes a big difference. Um, also how the plunger interacts with the tang of the blade. And with this one, man, I think that they reached a sort of um, magical mean, if you will, and they get it they get it right first of all as you can see it is a very nice to open and close knife it's a you know if you like to fidget with your knives which i must admit when i'm doing certain kinds of work at work when i'm alone i have a a dark room i i go into most of the time to edit um to edit video uh fidgeting with knives is something that does play into um my time in there but also Cutting apples, cutting other food comes up quite frequently. Uh, after I busted out my, my two front teeth in a bike accident, and then uh, I've had them pop out from time to time. Uh, well, back in the day when I couldn't afford very good dentistry, um, <laughs> I had a dentist say, just just don't eat olives, and don't, um, don't eat olives with pits, and don't eat apples without cutting them. So I use, I use uh, knives to cut my apples all the time. And this is great this this has been i will be honest the most realistic uh use of this so far is cardboard and apples and this does great with both cardboard and apples because it's thin nearly fully height uh hollow ground blade and uh very very thin and sharp right here this this geometry right behind the edge it's nice and thin and this gradual um widening to this very thin spine makes for a great slicer and great uh, cutter. Uh, well, since I'm here, I know this is all over the place so far, but since I'm here, this is uh, made of Artisan's proprietary powder metallurgy steel called ARRPM9. You can see that right there. And uh, my exposure to this steel is somewhat limited, but it has been very positive. I have another great knife I'll show you in a minute with that blade steel. And um, yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so uh, basic stuff, steel liners. You got the liners sitting proud of that G10. I love this storm cloud blue G10 or thunderhead blue G10. That's what I call it. That's right, TM. Can't say it without paying me. 
Uh, and then here you've got the fold over pocket clip with the flat screws. No notch cut out into the G10, but I gotta be honest, that doesn't, I don't care about that unless you put a filler tab on the other side or you don't have a left-handed option. You know, otherwise, go ahead, do that milling. I like it, but but I don't need it. What I do require is no button screws because my jeans, my pants are already, uh, you know, you know, the same as your pockets. And so the less damage we can do that way, the better. Uh, you can see two standoffs here and then very nicely uh, lightened, um, skeletonized um, liners under there. Very, very nice. Keeps it nice and light. And then as we move forward, look right in there. Here, let me get a something to point with, but right in there, you see that deep notch cut into the, the tang there. I think that's part of why this is such a good button lock is it seems to be a very sharp and crisp little pocket cut into the tang. Of course, here for the open position, which is arguably the more important place. Um, and then over on this side. Uh, yes, I have other button locks, but they the little notches don't seem to be as deep and as and as sharp. And I think that might be what makes this so snappy, um, both in and out. You know, it doesn't have that bounce. I cannot stand the bounce when you when you bring a button lock in through inertia like that or through um, centrifugal force. I hate when it bounces back out. And this, you don't have to be all anal about your timing to get it to stay to stay in. Um, so as I mentioned, very sharp. I do like the thumb studs, great jimping on this. If jimping is your thing, you'll be happy about that. It's just um, engaging enough. And then you have this little area where you can put your finger for cutting. I'm not sure if that's actually a meant to be a choil or if that's just a really great plunge grind and um, you know choil there for sharpening. Um, but it works really great if you if you need to cut like this. I imagine it does. I have not had to, but I put my finger in there and then I squeeze and put pressure and I'm not feeling I'm not feeling that edge because the edge is not coming down straight. It's following the contour of that curve. Um, one thing I did find as I was messing around with it and what if it closed while I was using it, uh, much like a, say a cold steel knife, that if you have your forefinger up in the, um, you know, seated right there where it should be and it closes, that little choil area is gonna stop your hand from getting cut. You know, unless there's extreme force and speed, it'll probably push your finger back a little and then you'll get cut. But just for regular usage, it's pretty nice. And, um, you know, that could be that could be part of what the purpose of this is. Um, I really like this drop point blade shape. I'm not a huge drop point guy. Um, I mean, they're great for usage, but you know, I'm I'm shallow and I frequently uh, really highly value the looks of a blade. And, and drop points don't usually do it for me in terms of looks, but this one does. It's just beautiful, and it reminds me a little bit of a of an artisan knife or a CJRB that I never got, and I can't remember what it's called now, but it was one of the first real big knives that they came out with that everyone was ooing and eyeing over. And now I'm having a senior moment. Uh, I like the chamfer on the side of that blade. Looks very nice. Uh, let me show you uh, some comparisons size-wise. Here it is with a PM2, and here it is with the ubiquitous a uh, small griptilian, mini griptilian, I guess it's called. So a little bit bigger. This is a almost, this is like a 3.2 inch blade uh, is what I come up with. I'm not quite 3.25, at least by my measurements, uh, but a, a really nice size, not generally in my wheelhouse for front right pocket main carry, but very much in my wheelhouse for um, back left pocket carry. I like to carry a small folder back there sometimes and also just really good for emotional support. Uh, let me show you with a couple of other button locks. I don't have too many of them. Um, this button lock I really like. Uh, you can see that instead of the crisp little pocket 
it's more of a funnel shape. Oh, let's see, it's, it's not as easy to see. Uh, you can sort of see it down in there. It's sort of a funnel shape or a cone shape that that sinks into. And, and I guess I understand that, uh, you can see it there, that uh, with time and wear, it will continue to, the spring is in here, will, the spring will continue to push it into that funnel and uh, theoretically increase engagement over time. Um, this one I like because it has a very high button. But this one has a lower button, but still is just as easy to get to as this Kaiser Mad Tonto. Um, let me see. I have another couple others here. This Senkut uh, is cool. What the hell is this called? This is the Senkut Watuaga. That's what I call it. A lot of people call it the Watuga, but they're wrong. It's the Watuaga according to me. Uh, this has the same sort of setup and it's easier to see there. Uh, a conical sort of cutout there, conical cutout and spring in here and then it pops in like that. Uh, I have not gotten my Wat Watuaga or my Mad Tonto to fail, though I've heard on Thursday Night Knives people say that they've gotten both of theirs to fail and I suppose if I bang on them long enough I could too, uh, but you know if I spine whack it five times with reasonable force and it doesn't pop in, I'm not concerned. This one does not have, a, like, these are the contrast to me. This is my favorite of the four that I have. I'll show one more. And this is my least favorite of the four. And listen, every time it's, every time I get a little bit of that lock stick. And if I'm going to be, and that's, a, that's the other thing, and it's pocketed out. So it's a convex uh, interface there with your thumb. And so you really have to, really have to push it in. And uh, you, well, you have to A, overcome the lock stick and then push it extra deep. If, if only this were crowned outward, uh, it would make this a much more pleasant lock to, to unlock. A very cool knife overall though. I'm not, uh, I'm not dissing this knife. Okay, and lastly, is uh, my other favorite right here. This is the the um, Scorpion by Orion Knives, and this is this is on a different level because um, because of the company. It's Orion Knives. It's uh, it's Dave. I love Dave, and he's been on the show a couple of times. I love his work, and he's just a cool and very thoughtful person. Um, and this design is very thoughtful. And this is one of the first. Um, uh, flipping button locks, I remember coming out, not this one, but the Solaris. And then uh, it was like the Malibu and the Solaris and a couple of others. And then after that, there was this tidal wave of companies making uh, button lock flippers. This one is outstanding. And it has uh, some features of all of these that I like. Uh, uh, the What I like about this is how that button sits proud. This one definitely sits proud. Um, it's got really good... Uh, geometry around the the pivot to get that thing to snap open so very good knife um, love them all but this one has really uh taken the cake for me they have one in a solid steel version which looks so great and uh when when cjrb asked me which one i'd like i said send the steel gray one i don't know why i wrote that uh and they thought I meant this gray one because yes, there is steel and there is gray. Uh, but what I meant is let me check out the steel one because the steel one will obviously be heavier than the others. And I wanted to see how heavy. Uh, this is like light, like nothing. So uh, a great option, uh, period. I really like this knife. Um, what is your experience with button locks and what has your experience been with um, the CJRBs? Um, let me know down below. Uh, this is the CJRB Pyrite. Thank you again, CJRB.